Hello, welcome to the Monday, June 26, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Columbia, Maryland. I think I mentioned it in Friday's podcast that we got a number of emails with fake DDoS extortions. Apparently, it is very common. I haven't received one personally yet, but we received a number of these emails. They're pretty much spam. For example, some of them appear to be sent to the WHOIS contacts of the respective domains, others just to random addresses. Ignore them. At this point, there is no evidence that any of them resulted in an actual DDoS attack. And given that it's travel and vacation season, I wrote up uh, some thoughts about traveling with your laptop. Looks like the laptop ban is pretty much off the table. Haven't heard anything about this. So unless you're traveling to very specific countries, you will be able to take your laptop with you in the airplane's cabin. But then again, uh, once you're at your destination, staying at a hotel, you probably aren't going to carry the laptop around with you. So unless you're one of those weird people that can survive without a laptop during your vacation, the diary that I wrote up has some ideas about how to keep your data secure while traveling. Over the last few years, there have been a number of attacks that used what's called a side channel attack in order to remotely extract cryptographic keys. Typically, that involves monitoring power consumption or electromagnetic radiation emitted from a PC. Well, typically, that does require quite expensive research equipment in order to pick up these signals. Fox IT now managed to do it uh, with essentially relatively cheap software defined radios, uh, but only over a few inches distance. On the other hand, you could still probably mount an attack like this by, for example, mounting a sensor at the underside of a desk or something like this, and then extract a cryptographic keys from a PC or a laptop being used on the top of the desk. How well an attack like this will work in a real life environment, of course, is still somewhat questionable because this particular test uh, was conducted conducted in a laboratory still. So that means that there was probably a lot less interference. And if there was any interference, then it was more controlled interference than you would have in a normal office environment. And according to the Cisco Talos research team, Loki is back. Loki, of course, last year and before was very active. Ransomware hasn't been seen much lately and mostly replaced with more current ransomware. This latest strain that uh, Talos uh, did observe has the odd behavior of only infecting Windows XP, more likely due to a coding flaw in the software than actually intended to work that way. Now you may say uh, maybe they're going after some of these industrial control systems or such that are running Windows XP that uh, made a lot of news like with uh, WannaCry, but uh, then again the way a locky is typically distributed via spam and malicious web links. Uh, it pretty much only targets your average users and desktop machines. So doubt that they're getting a lot of uh, paying customers uh, this way. But then again, it may only be a matter of time until uh, they adapt uh, this version of Locky and make it work for some of the more current versions of Windows as well. It does share some of the same spam infrastructure as, for example, the recent JAF botnet. But then again, this does not really prove that JAF and this latest Locky version are created by the same people. Often, for example, the spam infrastructure that's actually sending out uh, the malware or the malicious links is run by different people and just rented out to different uh, ransomware campaigns. And it looks like several terabytes of Windows beta builds and 
more importantly, source code has been leaked from Microsoft. Now, the source code that has been leaked here is typically the source code that Microsoft provides to some government and enterprise customers, but that source code is usually only provided on a, a relatively strict NDA. The beta builds, uh, now some of them may have been available uh, to a wider range of customers, I've heard, but not really clear what exactly was leaked here. Interestingly, there was apparently also an ARM build for Windows 10 leaked. Now, officially, Windows 10 does not support the ARM platform, but of course, uh, there have already been some uh, rumors and statements that uh, Microsoft was working on such a build. So not really that terribly surprising that something like this exists internally. Of course, a widespread leak of uh, this source code could make it easier for attackers to find vulnerabilities. But given that governments already had access to this and governments usually are at the forefront of writing the latest and greatest exploits for Windows, it's very possible that they already looked at these particular vulnerabilities. Well, and that's it for today. Uh, just uh, about next week. Next week will be a holiday here in the United States, uh, July 4th. So there will definitely not be a podcast on Monday and Tuesday. Still considering Wednesday through Friday. Let me know uh, what uh, you're looking for. If you're interested in podcasts during those days or if you wouldn't be listening to them anyway. Well, uh, that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.